fabulous show. Alaska. I heard be Alaska. It's hard. <laughs> Alaska. Pull up a chair and enjoy the show. You hear it from Sitka to Barrow. Gather around for Genie's show. It's the alley. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Heartbeat Alaska Native News, Native Information. I'm Jeannie Green. Thank you so much for joining us. Today, we travel all over the state of Alaska. We travel down to southeast Alaska to Yakutat and go clam digging on the beach and then all the way back up to St. Paul, Alaska to clean beaches. Then we present a trailer, a video demo of a program that's coming up this fall called This Earth We Walk On. It's a great show. I'll be back with Heartbeat Alaska. This program was made possible by Coeric Incorporated. Thank you, Coeric, for your generous support. Heartbeat Alaska is brought to you in part by Brown's Electric Lighting Gallery. Thank you, Brown's Electric, for your generous support of Heartbeat Alaska. Heartbeat Alaska is also sponsored by the Norton Sound Economic Development Corporation, serving the fisheries of the Bering Strait region. Heartbeat Alaska is also brought to you by Frontier Flying Service. Thank you, Frontier, for getting Heartbeat Alaska airborne. This program is also brought to you by ASRC Energy Services, a subsidiary of Arctic Slope Regional Corporation. Now we head down to Southeast Alaska to Yakutat, one of the most beautiful villages in the world where they have so much an abundance of natural resources like clams. Yakutat is the northernmost Tlingit community in Alaska. The village sits all alone on the shores of the Gulf of Alaska. If you are a ship traveling across this notoriously stormy sea, the sight of Yakutat Harbor can be quite a relief. It's one of the only refuges along the coast. Yakutat's nearest neighbors are Cordova, 220 miles west, and Juneau, 240 miles southeast. Being this far away can make for a quiet village. You may think it's boring here. But really, there's so much to do. It's a crisp spring morning in Yakutat, and this group of friends is heading in search of some clams. On clear mornings like this, it's hard to imagine a more beautiful place. Eagles soar overhead as the boat slips across silky water. Through the clouds, North America's second tallest mountain, Mount St. Elias, is beginning to show off. St. Elias is over 18,000 feet tall, and the fact that it sits so close to the ocean makes it seem even taller. Yahi, yahi, yahi. Ina a yahi ina a agu kati shaha hi yahi 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 chakisani yah a yahi. Mount Saint Elias isn't the only big thing around here. The Hubbard Glacier is the largest tidewater glacier in North America. And don't forget the Malaspina Glacier, the largest Piedmont glacier in North America. 
If you've ever flown from Juneau to Anchorage, you've probably seen both these glaciers out the window. One thing that isn't big around here is the Little Neck Clam, also known as Steamer Clam. This little garden rake is one of the best tools for digging through the low tide mud, but pretty much anything will do, even as little sandcastle shovel. I'm going to for a while and I'll play with the shovel. Okay. That makes no difference. I got uh, Actually, we usually use those garden hose. But uh, we don't have any of those today. We got off on a early start. Also, with the clams, once in a while, they find a cockle. Here's a clam, and this one here is a cockle. Cockle's a little more ribbed. Clams are a little more smooth. Well, they're pretty much both prepared the same way. You can half fry them on the half shell, boil them up, uh, deep fry them, jar them, smoke them. Um, they like the smaller ones for smoking, but uh, the bigger ones like this, my personal favorite, just putting them on the half shell. And They're awesome. Really good. I wish I get to do it more. First on the list for Eric are the smaller clams. His fiance likes them smoked, and she likes lots of them. It's just hard with these little baby ones that are the best for smoking, but you have to get a million of them, you know? <laughs> I came back with like a five gallon bucket full, and she just laughed. <laughs> I thought I really had enough, you know? After about an hour, the tide is creeping up enough to set their skiff afloat. With full buckets, they shove off for home. The Clinkets of Southeast Alaska have lived in this area for centuries. On the beach today, Melinda walked in the footsteps of her ancestors, who walked the very same shore. Unfortunately, Melinda can't dig for clams everywhere her ancestors did. One of the legacies left behind in the hectic days of World War II was toxic waste. One of the best traditional clamming spots near Yakutat is closed because these toxins have built up in the shellfish. Some people here also associate the high rates of cancer in Yakutat with these toxins left to seep into the soil near town. But like many villages in Alaska, Yakutat also benefited from the flurry of new building projects during World War II. Yakutat's airport and many of the roads were built by the military. Sliding back into the boat harbor on a beautiful morning like this, it's easy to remember what really matters. 
clear skies, crisp mornings, and good friends. Heartbeat Alaska to Yuwakshi My name is Fred White from Yakutat. Heartbeat Alaska will be right back. In the 1890s, pioneers carved a railway through the rugged mountains between Skagway and the Klondike. More than a century later, the White Pass and Yukon route still makes this legendary run. Along the way, life has gotten better for folks working on the railroad. Thanks in part to Primera Blue Cross Blue Shield of Alaska. A health plan that's offered smart choices and quality coverage to the people of Alaska since before it was a state. Primera Blue Cross Blue Shield of Alaska. We're here. We're with you. Hi, Kuyana for Flying Bering Air. Bering Air flies throughout Northwest Alaska and has hubs in Nome and Kotzebue. Bering Air flies both helicopters and fixed wing aircraft, such as our Cessna Caravans, Piper Navajos, Beach King Airs, and our large cargo aircraft, the Kata. Bering Air offers daily scheduled flights and charters throughout Alaska and the Soviet Far East. Bering Air also provides emergency medical flights for Northwest Alaska. For safe and reliable service, fly with Bering Air. From Yakutat, Alaska, all the way to St. Paul. Thank you, Rhonda McBride, for contributing this story on behalf of the students there who are busy cleaning up the beaches. St. Paul Island is one of the most remote places in the world. Yet every day the waves bring debris from everywhere. You see these holes right here? They seem very small, but seals get into them and there's no getting out of it. Jill Freitas has lived on the island all her life and remembers a time when beaches were full of seals, even more crowded than you see here. Scientists aren't really sure why seal numbers are dropping, but Jill wonders if debris like this is part of the problem. I've seen nets like this get caught around a seal so bad that it like sliced right through, it, through its neck like a couple inches or so and like almost killed it. Jill's brother Roman is also worried about what the waters bring to shore. Worst debris I've ever seen, probably this ship right here, Ocean Clipper. It's been here ever since I was a little kid and all, so it's been sitting here, not moving anywhere, just all rusting up and everything. Looks like a ghost ship or something. A ghost ship that could be deadly. Pretty soon it's gonna be so rusty, you just tip over and while kids are on it, they could get badly hurt, even killed. Marine debris hurts both people and animals. And here on St. Paul Island, both depend on the sea and each other. It's a way of life in the Bering Sea that goes back for thousands of years. Students in St. Paul are working hard to clean up the beaches so that this way of life can go on for their children and their grandchildren. From St. Paul Island, Curtis Malavidoff reporting for We have a brand new program coming up this fall. It's called This Earth We Walk On. And the whole program is about what the earth brings to us for wellness, for lifestyles that enhance our living as native people. We'll travel from one area of the state to the next with our new host, Dr. Gary Ferguson. Let's take a look at this brand new program. Hi, I'm Dr. Gary Ferguson, and welcome to this Earth We Walk On. This is root. The uh, bottom part is like sweet potato root. Dilution plants. This is our land. These make good uh, salads, high in vitamin B. Anybody else want to try? Are you good? Join Dr. Gary Ferguson each week as we travel with him across the great state of Alaska, exploring the earth and water that have sustained Alaskan natives since the beginning of time. 
From the top of the world to the southeast panhandle, you will see firsthand the wonders that blanket this earth we walk on. So you really need basic uh, green food. Um, you could read about it in history back in the Civil War. They, could, they got all kinds of tons of leaves like this and put it in wounds. And it basically cleaned out the wound plus healed it. The ladies who used it were able to live longer and happier, ache free from rheumatoid or arthritis pain. It's important for um, people to know what could grow up here. What's, um, what's perennials, what's annuals? Um, what food value could they get out of this for that? And um, they gain a self, a, they, uh, their self-esteem to this, that we know this, this is our land. And uh, it gives them power to go on and grow. Dishes are carded, people have gardens, flowers, and whatnot. This is our resources here in Barrow. I mean, wherever we go, whether it be up in land or out on the ocean, the, the resources are right there. Um, it just goes to applying your, what knowledge you picked up and utilizing it out on the ice or up inland. So it's all based on our tradition and it's passed along from generation to generation. Whaling is the, the, the nucleus of our culture. And, uh, but it's not just whaling, it's all, all of the things that we're, we do as a community is intertwined with the Inupiat culture. And that's, you know, and nature provides for us that in that sense. It doesn't have a beginning or an end. It's just, Year round is, is like that. So our culture is intertwined with nature uh, because it, provi it has provided uh, for uh, Inupiat people up in the north uh, from time immemorial, I guess. Uh, it's just, it's always feel like that this kind of livelihood in the Arctic has been, has been able to sustain the Inupiat way of life uh, in, in, even through harsh winter. For the old Tlingits like me is our fish heads. The elders will fight over that and um, you can bake it um, high in those wonderful omega-3 fatty acids. It's a good source of protein. So um, those are truly a survival food as well. They give you protein and um, the fats for energy. We've got herring eggs here and we harvest them on hemlock branches. So what we do is we um, cut some of the hemlock branches from the tree and tie them together and anchor them down with a rock and go set them at low tide at a spot on the beach where we think the herring will come in and spawn when the tide comes back up and covers the branches. Any of these types of seafoods and especially the salmon are high in omega-3 fatty acids. Again, that's good for your um, healthy heart. Beach asparagus. This is packed with vitamin A, real nutritious, high in fiber. It's got sodium in it, and um, it's a real favorite. It lifts my spirit when I eat these kinds of foods, so I try to eat that as much as possible. And the other thing about it is, you know, when you go out to get these foods, it just um, forms, helps you form tighter bonds with your friends and your family that you work on these foods with. And so it's just a very enjoyable way of life. Today we're just basically we're we're uh, going for a hike along the beach, head of the bay, over to Hot Springs Saddle, and uh, it's like this amazing prehistoric valley. It looks like right out of Jurassic Park. So again, that's Sam Kuchushki. It's a uh, Russian's name. Russian name is Kuchushki or B 
beech lovage. And it's a great source of vitamin C. It's what saved a lot of the early pioneers to the region from getting scurvy. Of course, the natives knew exactly what to eat. This berry is very high in vitamin C. It's a nagoon berry. I believe it's also called the cloud berry. Similar to the, the salmon berry in properties that it's very high in vitamin C. And it's a great source of antioxidants. We are at Hot Springs Valley. This is uh, an amazing area. The, the stream that runs down here is, is filled with hot springs. You can't see it right now because of the wind, but normally on a, on a calmer day, you see the smoke rising from the, the areas that are hot. Years ago, it's not used as much anymore. Um, folks used to come down here and, and fish for silver salmon and soak in the hot springs. And they talked about the healing properties for rheumatism and other kinds of complaints. This was a very healing area. So not only is it beautiful, but it's also a traditional healing site. And this is Dr. Gary Ferguson. Thanks for watching this Earth We Walk On, that show about the healthy life ways of our native peoples. This week from Magatan Island in the Aleutians. Thanks for joining us. Please join us next time. Flying in Alaska? Fly Frontier, the official airline of Heartbeat Alaska. Frontier is expanding again. They've added new routes to Nome, Kotzebue, and the surrounding villages. As you can see, Frontier is now really covering Alaska. So the next time you fly, try Frontier. Frontier offers quick, convenient check-in, low fares, and service direct to many of the villages. Frontier Flying Service is the official airline of Heartbeat Alaska. Make it your official airline, too. Welcome to the Aurora Inn, Nome's newest and finest hotel. The Aurora Inn offers you clean, modern, quiet, and secure rooms. There are a variety of room types to choose from. Whether you're traveling alone, on business, or taking a trip with your family, you will always find a room to suit your needs. Also located at the Aurora Inn is Nome's only quality vehicle rental service, Stampede Ventures. Whether you're here on business, or for sightseeing, bird watching, or just exploring the local area, we have a vehicle and a room for you. The Aurora Inn, in Nome. For generations, the Chupik Eskimos of Nunavak Island have maintained the finest herd of reindeer anywhere in the world. The flavor and nutrition of these magnificent free-range deer is unmatched and is now available in commercial USDA-inspected lots. This is the only official outlet for authentic Nunavak reindeer meat. For more information or to place an order, contact Nunavak Meat Reindeer and Seafood Products, Box 42, Macquarie, Alaska, 99630, or call 907-827-8015. Supplies are limited. Travel with me now to Barrow, Alaska, where we're going to Eskimo dance.
see ya.